Hello, my friend. My name is Anton from Canoon.com, and today we are having the fifth video demo about our PYJ in my Python library created by Canoon.com for managing network elements with JNMI. So at the fifth demo, we will cover today the second part of the telemetry, which we have started in the previous one. Therefore, I strongly recommend you to watch the previous video. In the previous part, we have started covering the subscribe uh, gRPC operation, which is used to stream the telemetry from your network devices to your client. In the previous session, we have discovered and shown to you how you could use the telemetry with the native protobuf encapsulation. Today, we will take a look how you could use the PYJNMI as a client to collect the telemetry from the network devices if they stream the telemetry in the JSON format. So in the previous session, we was focusing on the Arista device because it streams the telemetry in the protobuf encoding. Today, we will take a look at our Nokia router, which is streaming the telemetry in the JSON format. So just to recap, we are using our server PI, JNMI um, has um, been installed on it. And we are connecting to the Nokia router using, in this case, IPv4 addresses. However, we can do it over IPv6 as well. Jumping back to our code where we have started um, the previous hour session. So uh, it's important, therefore, to take a look what you have um, uh, to take a look at the previous session because it contained the explanation how we get to this stage. So just to remind, we are importing the inventory from our host files. It contains the IP addresses, type of the network operating system, uh, port where the GNMI is working, and credentials to connect to the device. The previous session we was uh, working with Arista. The four was using the Arista um, details. Today we will work with the Nokia so that we will use Nokia details. Now. The, besides the uh, host, we need also to import from the PY JNMI, from the client submodel, the JNMI client and the metric parser. These two uh, classes are used first to create the connectivity and second to parse the telemetry in the proper form. So where we have ended the last time, we have created the loop going over our inventory. And in this loop, we have created the basic conditional so that we were working with the Arista. We have created the conditional that network operating time should be um, Arista. And we have created the proper um, subscribe message, which is used by the client to send the request to subscribe to certain endpoints and collect all the telemetry data. Then the call itself, I mean, once the message is ready, as you see, the message is just a native Python dictionary with the list of very simple, don't need to parse, just it, it does the job for you. And that's one of the obvious benefits of the PYJNMI. All the messages you are working are native Python form. You don't need to bother yourself about converting from XML, JSON, protobuf, or whatsoever. So then we build the connectivity towards the network element using JNMI class, using the context manager with S, we provide the IP address port, we put it as a tuple to connect towards network element. We provide also credentials, username, password. And in this case, we are using the authentication using the credentials rather than certificate. Therefore, we are using the key insecure. Um, later, once we complete all our demos with insecure, we'll show you how to use a certificate to work with the network element. So once uh, you establish the connectivity, you have an object which has all these details, you build them um, so their connectivity is built and you use the subscribe method with a single argument subscribe and you pass the message subscribe that you have created. And this creates a, a telemetry stream where the devices start sending you the details. So the stream is based using the generator. So the four we are building their uh, for loop. Despite this is a for loop as we are used, uh, using generator beneath where constantly will be receiving the information, so it will be indefinite leave. And uh, we are parsing the received telemetry stream using telemetry parser um, class, which um, converts the received data from the format it is received 
into the native again Python uh, dictionary list and so on and so forth. So in order to start working with the Nokia, we need to do the, the two things. So first we change obviously our conditional that we are looking not for the Arista EOS network operating time, but from our inventory as we have called it Nokia-SRS. So we take this type and uh, add as a conditional. Now we will be working only with the Nokia, which is correct because we want to figure out how the telemetry is working with the Nokia. So second is uh, we need to modify our subscribe messages. In this uh, regard, we need to do two simple things. So first, we need uh, to modify the pass what we are listening after. So um, the names of the interfaces in the Nokia, if we are using the open config, what we are using in our lab, needs uh, to follow the name of the physical um, interfaces. So if we go to the CLI, so and we go to list of our interfaces, we would see that we have an interface, it's called OC underscore 111 underscore no. So this um, IP address, uh, so this interface is working, you see it is both operational app for IPv4 and IPv6. However, if I go uh, inside the configuration and to the dedicated open config mode, which uh, Nokia is having for the open config and run info, you would see that I have the interface, which is called 11C11. Uh, Basically, this is uh, in line with our lab topology. So you see that is the name of the interface, 11C11. And uh, we can connect all the telemetry about this interface. However, the interface, on, on the interface layer, we will collect all sorts of layer two parameters. We could also connect the details from another YAN model called network instances. So this um, uh, YAN model maps the interfaces to a specific uh, GRTs, so uh, routing tables basically, um, we have this interface 11C11 mapped to a default global routing, uh, to default routing table, that's why it's called GRT, global routing table. We could also do the mapping for the VRFs or VPRNs, how the Nokia they called, but uh, it's not important for the, from the perspective of this demo. So uh, what we will do, we will create the passes so that we would listening or collecting the telemetry information from two different YAN models, open config interfaces and open config network instance. And uh, we will collect all the telemetry related to this interface in both YAN models. So how we do this? In our pass, in the interfaces, we just replace the Ethernet 1, one, um, Ethernet 1 which we were using previously in the Arista with the new pass 11C11 as a name of the interface. So the second, we will collect the uh, pass from another model. So um, looking back to the configuration, we need to collect from the network instances, uh, network instance base, interfaces, interface 11C110. Uh, so we would like to collect the telemetry for this um, entry. So the network instances are served by separate YAN model. So their model is called open config dash network dash instance column. Now we need to provide the top level container so it would be network instances. The next level container is network instance, which is a list uh, with the key's name. In our case, this is base. So network instance name base and then we need to collect interfaces interface and uh, the specific id of the interface so we build the pass further interfaces so interfaces interface id and we provide the id of this interface so the final bit here would be as the nokia is using JSON for uh, streaming the telemetry, we need to change the formal type from the proto to the JSON. Otherwise we will get a reject from the Nokia that it is not supporting the um, requested encoding. Now we save our script and we could run the script called subscribe.py if everything is correct. 
uh, what should happen once we go in the loop to the Nokia device, we will create this message with these two passes where we would be collecting information from in the JSON format. And using our PYJNMI library, we will first create the telemed stream with this message. So basically subscribing for these uh, passes. And then when they would start receiving information, we will be parsing using another um, class out of PYGNMI, which is called telemetry parser. Let's get started. So um, the script is executed. Now we are waiting for any responses. So the way how it is working in the array state was sending all the information immediately. In the Nokia, it sending at the end of this interval. So I could make this window a bit bigger and we could um, analyze what we are seeing here. So you see, we have all the time uh, the prefix where we collect certain information from. And uh, you see also the various IDs, which is collected from this part. So we see ID, which is matching our interface name. And then further, we collect all the information that we might have name of the interface, ID, um, all of other details that uh, is streamed. And finally, we are coming to the counters where you would see the pass like in octets, in unicast packets, all of them are um, um, having this pass. So basically how it works, you would see the pass uh, starting from the top level container interfaces and interface name of the interface, father pass state counter. So this prefix is common for all these counters. So basically counter slash in octets, counter slash in unicast packets. In this regard, the way how the Nokia streams telemetry is different to the Arista, where Arista were having all the time a single long pass and uh, single value associated with that. So however, despite the way the device is streaming telemetry back to you, whether in the Arista protobuf, single value to a single pass, or in Nokia where they send uh, the JSON format um, and they aggregate the messages over under a common prefix and then providing further uh, smaller pass details. You collect all the necessary counters in the device in the way the device provided to you and you could work with it. That's one of the biggest advantage of using PYGNMI or any other uh, tool or writing it directly yourself because we have already fixed all these problems for you. You are getting all the counters so you see um, from the interfaces interface, which is related to the open config interface, the Nokia does not retain the name of the module. And uh, if we scroll further, we would see also uh, the um, network instance prefixes. So when we are collecting the information from another pass. So, oh, something has gone. Oh. And uh, if we would scroll it further down, so you would see once the sync is complete, basically when the information is uh, streamed to you, it is making a pause. So basically it means so that all the devices, all the information is coming through our um, subscribe stream. Once the counters would be pulled, you would get a message like in sync true, the same as you were getting uh, previously in the Arista telemetry. And you could uh, start working with this telemetry. Basically, I'll stop it uh, at this stage. Um, you could obviously, as you see, add uh, further activities here, such as posting the collected information through the REST API to your management system, or uh, storing it locally, or processing or analyzing data, pushing any configuration, up, let's say, through the same JNMI client if you'd like to modify configuration. So, um, and uh, this allows you to complete the loop. So to recap what we have covered so far up to this point. So today we have taken a look onto the telemetry with PYGNMI in case the telemetry is streamed in the JSON format. And the previous session we have covered telemetry using the protobuf. And the first video we have covered the capability uh, RPC, so collecting the young models and other parameters supported by the network elements. In the second video, we have covered the get call where we were collecting the operational or configurational data, not as a streamed one, but just as 
request your spontane operation under the third video. We have covered the set, the configuration of the network element, modification of the existing one, imposing you or deleting of the configuration. So this covers all the aspect of the management of the network element with uh, JNMI and uh, with PYI JNMI. In the next video, we'll take a look on to the integration of PYI JNMI with Nornir. So you would see how you could use this tool to um, manage multiple network devices through the JNMI in the parallel. Thank you very much for your attention. Take care, stay safe, stay healthy, and goodbye.